Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600 brought to you by Covers.com. I'm your host, Jason Logan. Thanks so much here for tuning in to the Tuesday show as we lock horns with the bookies for NFL Week 13, which starts with Bills and Patriots on Thursday Night Football. A pretty good matchup there. And we're coming off a pretty good week of bets for the podcast as well, too. We had a really nice Thanksgiving Day turnout. Uh, We had a pretty solid weekend. We were capped off by the Steelers covering last night. Also had a player prop on Johnson last night, cashed in. And we improved to three for three on our Team 600 teaser bets. And part of that team is my man Delano here on the uh, producer on the Sharp 600. Just got back from a weekend in Vegas. I can smell you through the computer, actually. Oh, that's awful. (laughs) The smell, everything. Five days is too much. Uh, should have been three, but you know we're back now. We f- flew the red eye last night after uh, Monday Night Football, but uh, tomorrow is going to be a terrible day. All right, man. But I appreciate the commitment. I appreciate you waking up from your nap and and holding it down here. Of course, wouldn't want to be anywhere Bus- else. Business trips, right? Business trips. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start the show, a friendly reminder: please rate and review the Sharp Six Hundred. When you get a moment, I got some nice feedback from folks inside the industry today. Uh, that very much made my day. Very much appreciate fe- that feedback. Uh, so uh, if you like the show as well, too, let us know. And uh, with that out of the way, a 600 seconds on the clock, please. Burn some dust here. Eat my rubber. All right, so Clark Clark Griswold there for us to get us started with the holiday season. And, you know, we got a pretty sweet slate of football action here this week. Got some great matchups, got some great storylines as well. One of those being that old AFC East rivalry between the Bills and the Patriots. And that's where we start when we look at the early adjustments to the Week 13 odds. Bills open minus 15.5 at New England. Early money push list to minus 4.5. We got injuries to the Bills defense, injuries to the Patriots offense. Buffalo looking a little shaky the last three or four games. New England give up 33 points to the Vikes on Thanksgiving. Total here dropping from 45 to 43 points. Uh, Jaguars liner, uh, Jaguars liners, the Jags and Lions line has gone for a wild ride in the first 48 hours of action. Opens pick on Sunday night, early money shows up on Detroit, pushes us to minus one and a half as minus two, as big, uh, as big as minus two at some places. Pro guides got down on Jacksonville, not yesterday. And they knocked this down to pick them. Eventually goes to Jags minus one and a half after everyone reacts and the other books adjust and follow suit. Detroit has been a popular public play. It was again on Thanksgiving. I expect money to show up on the lines by Sunday. Move this back around a pick em. Saints go marching from plus six to plus three and a half on Monday night. They match up with Tampa Bay. Again, pro guys thought this was too much for the Bucks to lay, especially after just a gutless effort from Tampa Bay in that Cleveland game. So they grab New Orleans as the divisional dog, down as low as plus three and a half. And action fading the Denver Broncos, surprise, surprise, who are on the East Coast for another 1 p.m. kickoff this time in Baltimore. Ravens open minus seven and a half, now as big as minus nine and a half. I mean, what else can you say about Russell Wilson and the Broncos? Pretty, pretty terrible, terrible stuff. And uh, the spot doesn't work out well for them either. They play their second roadie, their third in four weeks, and their fourth in the last five games if you go back to the London game as well, too. And speaking of spots, we've pinpointed some stickier situational angles in Week 13, our favorite spot bets to consider when working out uh, the Week 13 odds. So another team in a nasty schedule spot here is the LA Chargers. They've basically lived out of a suitcase the last month. This team (coughs) goes to Vegas for their second straight road game. It's their fourth in five weeks. Bolts open minus two and a half, now down to minus one and a half. They're playing in Sin City which is always a tempting place to play. But you also have Miami at home next week, a potential look-ahead spot, what's going to be a very important AFC game in the playoff picture. Uh, We talked about the wild movement in the Jacksonville-Detroit game. Pros on the Jags, public likely backing the Lions come Sunday. Jaguars run the risk of a letdown. They're coming off a rare win and a thrilling win in which they score on a two-point conversion. That pays off that risk. Now they got to hit the road. Playing a Detroit team that is 10-4 ATS at home under Dan Campbell. Playing some pretty good uh, football right now, too. So a few bets that I have into the hopper already for Week 13. First was Minnesota minus three, hosting the Jets. I expected this to tick up to three and a half. We're actually seeing action on the Jets, driving this down. You can get a cheap field goal favorite at home right now. Vikes just hung 33 points on the best uh, defense in football. 
You have the Jets marching out QB2 Mike White. He balled out against a terrible Bears defense. Now, Minnesota, not the stingiest team out there, but they're very, very dangerous. Fifth in takeaways, 10 interceptions on the year. I like mini minus three. If you want a little less risk, I like Vikings money line as well, too, out there as low as minus 154. Took the over 51.5 points in Chiefs at Bengals. Now, the total for this one climbed up to 52.5. You look at last year's AFC Championship game, that closed with a total of 54.5. They just went under. This time around, though, we're not talking playoff football. We're talking about two offenses ranked number one and number four in EPA per drop back, number six and number nine in plays per game, two and six in red zone touchdown percentage. These teams don't miss that often. Chiefs, one of the quickest offenses out there in terms of plays per second, and the Bengals getting Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon back this week. Bengals defense has been solid, but hasn't faced an offense in a passing game anything near Mahomes and Co. here. Uh, extended forecast looks clear as well, too. I don't see any reason why you would want to play the under here, and unless you're just a soul-sucking contrarian. So you sad sack piece of shit, just bet the over and enjoy what is going to be a very, very fun game. For comparison, we have the Lions and the Jags on the board in Week 13. 51 and a half points is the total for that. More of a reflection of just two bad defenses, but there's a lot, so much more firepower on the field for this one. I'm comfy over 52 and a half. I'd be comfy all the way up to 54, taking the over. Uh, another bet that I like, San Francisco money line minus 194 over Miami at home, the teacher versus student matchup, McDaniel versus Shanahan. But uh, for this one here, Miami, a better offense, a better quarterback, but the defense is bad. And we saw that against Houston and they just cannot be trusted. San Francisco is going to roll them. Finn's been putting up points the past four games, but against defenses ranked 32nd, 31st, 30th, and 23rd. That was Houston. Some terrible, terrible defenses. Niners are a massive mountain to climb for this team. San Francisco, among the best pressure rates out there without blitzing. Tua completing less than 56% of his completions under pressure. This spread has ticked up to minus four. And if you don't know my policy on four-point favorites, I just don't fuck with them. I'd rather the money line. Niners minus 194 is the bet. So... If you haven't noticed, the holiday season is underway, which means a nonstop bombardment of Christmas music everywhere you go. But you know what? I'm steering into the sked. I like the Christmas tunes. Del, you said you like the Christmas tunes as well, too. It gets you jacked up. Who doesn't like Christmas tunes? I know. I know a bunch to. of people just being grinchy, man. Uh, then I'm assigning a Christmas song to some teams here as we enter week 13. So, Del, give me the first tune, please. All right, that's White Christmas, and it goes out to the New York Jets. The Jets fans dreaming of a White Christmas, a Mike White Christmas. After the QB2 roasted the Bears, rallied this team around him in the wake of Zach Wilson's falling out. Uh, we could have spun something up about mummy kissing Santa Claus when it comes to Wilson, but he's getting no mummy love riding the bench. Next song. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Now, that's a, it's a goodie. That's grandma got run over by a reindeer. And that one goes up to the Philadelphia Eagles. Are you sure it was a reindeer that ran over grandma or was it Jalen Hurts? The Eagles dual threat QB rushed for 157 yards, part of a 363 yard day on the ground from Philly against the Packers this past Sunday. It's going to be a whole lot of grandmas flopping around the field here in week 13 as the Eagles go ground and pound trading trucks with Titans running back Derrick Henry. It'll be a lot. That, that gave people got to hurt after that game. Next song. That, of course, is Last Christmas by Wham. It goes out to the Indianapolis Colts, just like a scorned George Michael sings. The Colts' defense has been giving the offense the ball. In the very next play, they give it away. Indy sits tied for the most giveaways in the NFL with 21. It killed them last night against the Steelers on Monday Night Football. 11 interceptions, 10 fumbles, a partridge in a pear tree. Indy, you're making it gross. Stay out of the theater. You've got Butterfingers. Last one. That's that soulful please come home for Christmas. That one goes out to the New Orleans Saints. Nola, wishing it was home. Wishing it was home, not just for Christmas, but for week 13. The Saints play on the road in Tampa Bay this Sunday. We talked about the big line move going from plus six to plus three and a half. Action showing up on New Orleans. However, this team 0-5 ATS as visitors this season. Now, New Orleans, a plus 1.2 point differential in the big easy but minus 6.8 on the road. They're losing by an average of almost a touchdown on the road this year. Uh, Saints on a tough stretch, too. This is back-to-back -back road games. This is their third in four weeks at Tampa Bay. And then they also play three of their next four away from home. So 
So we head into the two-minute drill here. The Bills and Pats mix it up for the first time this year on th uh, Thursday Night Football, and I'm looking at the wide receiver pop for Isaiah McKenzie, who is coming off a huge Thanksgiving Day game. He caught 6 of 10 targets for 96 yards versus the Lions and has seen his snap counts tick up significantly here over the past five games as he works himself uh, back from injury that cost him games in Week 5 and Week 7. Offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey talked about the importance of getting McKenzie involved. It takes a lot of pressure off the top targets like Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis, who are matching up against a very good elite Pats defense, ranked amongst the best in the league at slowing down, especially against wide receiver ones. They're very, very good. So Lil Dirty, that's McKenzie's nickname, and I love it, uh, comes into week 13 with some swagger against Belichick's D as well, too. He toasted the Pats for 125 yards last December, 11 catches on 12 targets. He did see an uptick in work due to Davis being out, but he had three grabs on three targets for 45 yards against New England in a wild card round, too. McKenzie is primarily working out of the slot, uh, and that should be a great option underneath for Josh Allen, who faces a daunting Patriots pass rush, generating the second highest pressure rate in the land. That means... Little time for those big downfield strikes to hit to Davis, to Stefan Diggs, and probably more quick hits to the five foot eight speedster out of Georgia who can pick up those quick gains underneath. Now, McKenzie's week 13 receiving total opened at 25 and a half yards this morning, and within hours, it jumped up to as high as 30 and a half. The lowest it's out there right now, 27 and a half yards. So, I like the over, which is something he has done in the last two. Uh, sorry, in two of the last three games, he's gone over that, had a, had a dud of a game against Cleveland, didn't do much there, uh, but had a massive game against Detroit. So I expect him to kind of pick up where he left off. I like where Dorsey's head's at with him right now. Uh, and McKenzie, definitely a speedster who can pick up some point or pick up some yards after the catch. All right. So that is it for this episode of the sharp 600 podcast. Thank you, Dell. Thank you for listening. Please. When you get a second, rate and review the podcast, let us know what you, uh, what you like, what you don't like. We're going to be back for more Week 13 insights and action, including another Team 600 teaser on the Friday show. Until then, enjoy Thursday Night Football and good luck.